Item 22, vote to ratify a contract between the town of Southbridge and general mechanical contractors for the total amount of $73,000 to be funded from account number 218000-524300-20500 CARES Act 25% and 218659-524300-80350 RMV repair and maintenance of buildings and grounds 75%. Second. Motion by Council Lazo, second by Councilor Steves. Councilor Marchetti. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This did go through DPW and we voted four to zero to recommend it for council approval. Thank you. Mr. Town Manager, do you have something you want to interject first about this process before we go to Heather? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, this is just part of our ongoing efforts to uh, keep the RMV building here in Southbridge. As you know, this is important issue to the town. Uh, there's a legacy there of effort on the townspeople to keep this here. I started negotiations when I first got here and one of the issues was making sure that the air exchange meant Department of Public Health requirements. I've had correspondence along the way and I keep the Mass DOT representative updated. Uh, after the last um, DPW subcommittee, I did based on a comment from Councilman Marchetti, I did send the plan to Mass DOT. I did get an acknowledgement that it was received, a red notification. Um, there was no comments submitted to me. I asked if they had any comments, please uh, let us know. Uh, I didn't get any uh, actual feedback, but I do know that they did receive it and acknowledge receiving it. Um, but again, these are uh, the repairs that were scoped out and sent out to be forbid so that we can move forward and hopefully restart the negotiations to get the, the contract and get this open for the people at Southbridge and to make it a destination as Council Lasso and indicated to draw people in to start dropping their dollars when they come in to visit the town. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Heather? So um, we went out to bid with this project. We received two bids. Um, you have a summary of the two bids that we received. I did check the references for the lowest bidder. Um, I called all three references that were provided. Only one called me back, but he had a glowing recommendation and said that he would definitely use them again. I also checked at a local project in town, um, which I did mention in the subcommittee, that they had done some work on a large project recently here in town. And that project manager also had a glowing recommendation and would recommend working with them. So um, although I don't know them personally, they did come strongly recommended. Um, it is a pretty clean scope of work. Um, we have mechanical drawings designed by a um, mechanical engineer, air handling specialist that um, was provided and 25% of this is being CARES Act and 25% is coming from the revolving account um, from the RMB. Thank you. Right. Right. Did you have something? Yes, Mr. Chair. Sorry, I couldn't hear you for a second. Um, yes, I, I just I wanted to thank um, everybody for their work on this. I literally got a call today asking about the status of the RMB and was able to tell them that we were doing some discussion on agenda item tonight. So I'm happy that we're making progress and we're keeping this RMB. We worked so hard to get back in the first place. I'm happy we're doing everything we can to keep it because this is something Selfridges wants and we're going to do everything we can to keep it here. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, through the town manager. Um, as of today, you're stating that we do not have a signed contract with the state. Through you, Mr. Chairman, that is correct. Um, when I arrived here, I believe that contract expired the week I was here. Uh, I'd have to check my notes. I don't have them with me at the moment, but I have been in talks with them and I had a conversation and some assurances from Mass DOT as long as we were making progress that they would continue to work with us to keep the registry here. Um, this has already been noted to our legislative um, delegation, both Representative Durant and Senator Fatman, and I reiterated this last week when I spoke to Senator Fatman um, when we were talking about capital projects and funding and, and said that, you know, I 
if we're going to make this commitment, I hope that we can get assurances from Mass DOT. So I, I have been putting that bug in the ear of our legislators. But to answer your question, at this point in time, no. Um, this was a condition of theirs before we could move forward to ensure this building was up to um, DPH specifications before they would re-enter into the contract. Thank you. If I can continue, so and I don't dispute the, the 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 need for the registry in town and the history. I've heard a couple of times tonight. Let's make it a destination town for what? So people can come here and go to Dunkin' Donuts. They can go buy a pizza. That's the reality of it right now. You know, if we're going to bring this building up to DPH standards, well, every building in town should be. We have hotels. We have doctors' offices, barbers. The list can certainly go on, supermarkets, churches. I feel like the, the RMV is holding us hostage to this building. If not the registry, sure, maybe something else might go in there, but there's no plans right now. The registry might sign a contract, they might not. We don't know that right now, but I feel that they're, they're holding us hostage to say, well, do this, bring it up to the state's DPH standards. But what about town hall? What about the rest of the buildings in town? I can't justify this this evening. And I'm not going to, to, to say yes to something without a signed contract and spend possible taxpayers' dollars when the, they're, the, they're holding us to a DPH standard that every other building in town does not have to be. The state mandates X amount of air, air exchanges per hour. The state mandates, um, you know, we could do we could do many, many other things, um, you know, and I'm sure Heather's already done this with the with the um, with the HVAC system, um, with the supply and the exhaust air and so on and so forth, and turn it on early and late. And, but no, not not without a signed contract, a long term contract that we can see the return on the investment. Now, sure, if they decide not to come in, this may rent out to somebody else. It may not. The registry brings a lot of traffic into town. I don't dispute that. And I know a lot of history in this town. They fought to keep it here. But if they're holding our hands to the fire and saying, you do this or else we're not going to come, I'm sorry, say goodbye. That's my opinion. Don't hold us hostage to a DPH standard unless you're going to fund it 100%. That's, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors? Mr. Town Manager? Just a point of clarification. A lot of those other buildings that you mentioned, Councilor Katrona, um, those are not public buildings. They are private buildings. So this, this is a building that we would be leasing to another public entity. And they're saying that it has, before they will be a tenant, it has to meet those requirements. We're not leasing the town hall. We're not leasing some of our other um, town owned buildings. And we, we can't, this isn't an issue for some of the, the hotels and restaurants. This is the issue before us. And this this was the issue from the get-go when I, I came to the council about doing this back in the, the fall, that if we wanted to keep them here, that we were gonna have to go down this road. So I've mentioned this for, for quite some time. And that is one of the conversations to your point that I had with Senator Batman that, um, you know, if we're gonna be doing this, it would be, beneficial if we could recoup some of this money from the state. So that was a question I asked of him the other day. So I, I, I am trying to stay on top of that. For the moment, if we want to stay um, in a position where we can continue to negotiate with them, they said this is this is basically a non-starter. If we can't bring it up to code, then that's something they don't want to do. So listening to what the council told me before and what I gathered from the conversations with a lot of citizens, we, we've started down this road so that we could uh, make an attempt to renegotiate the contract and keep the RMB building here in South. Thank you, Mr. Tommy. Councilor Daniel? Councilor Daniel? Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Um, in speaking with constituents in town, it's been volunteered to me. I don't even need to bring it up. People are coming to me and they're very specifically stating that they want to see the registry open that uh, they feel it's important that it be in town. And uh, basically it's in, in my mind, it's a mandate from the citizens in town to do what we can. Um, I understand 
where uh, Councilor Catrona is coming from, where it does kind of feel uh, a little bit like we're being held hostage. Um, on the other hand, um, as landlords, we need to be good landlords. We need to make sure that our building is amenable and uh, uh, favorable for the businesses that we're trying to attract. So um, I will support this measure and I will do so at the behest of the citizens that have spoken with me. Thank you. Thank you. Council Laza. I think what we have to keep in mind is we're competing for it. Uh, if you're going to get on the competition field, uh, sometimes you have to jump through some, through some hoops to attain it. I do agree with Counter Catrona, where at some point, uh, Mr. Town Manager, we're showing our good faith dealing with streaming out the air quality, moving forward on all the requests like a good landlord. But at some point, we need to be good business partners and we need them to meet us halfway. So I think I think this council is all in agreement, not all, but are in agreement of, of competing for this uh, like we did the last time, only I don't think we have to compete as hard. But I do think that on, on your behalf, you have to represent us as a council, as the former government here, to our representatives that somebody at the state level in the registry of motor vehicles or mass DOT or wherever this comes from, has to make a commitment to Southbridge at some point when we're putting all the coin into the building, they need to show up as a tenant and show good faith. So I think I, I kind of agree with uh, Council Catrona. Tonight I'm voting for it. I'm in favor of it because I maintain that destination mentality with a competitive attitude or we can go and get it. And that's the way we should do it. But uh, at some point, it should be a crossroad where you represent us at the state level to say, okay, we did everything we have to do. Let's go. Where's the paperwork? Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Town Manager, did you? No, I just wanted to say, Mr. Manager, I just said duly noted on uh, uh, both uh, okay. Council Lazo and Council Katrona's uh, part. I, I understand, I hear you loud and clear, and I will work on that. I'm making notes to myself right now. I'll work on that tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Marchetti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Um, <clears throat> the councilors wanted this done, so that's what we're doing. Uh, I think the town manager is trying his, his darndest to get this done. He says he's talking to the state reps. He's gone to uh, DPW, or. Um, RMV to get this done, so he's trying, and I give him credit for that. But believe me, you don't want to go to Worcester. I had to go to Worcester for some RMV issues, and it's like going into Fort Knox or something. They've, <laughs> it's very difficult to get in there. They line you up like cattle, and they check they check you coming in. They they check you all the way down the line. You, it's it's very difficult. It's a long trip, so I'm glad. I hope that this stays in Southbridge. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors? Um, just a couple of comments that I, I just want to say. Um, one again, here again, is another example of the previous manager not taking the bull by the horn and addressing this issue a year plus ago. Council at that time had said, hey, we know this registry lease is coming up. It was a 10 year lease, I believe it was. Um, this is coming up, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And he sat back and transitioned to the new town manager and says, hey, COVID, they're just not gonna do anything right now. They're sitting back. And we said, hey, we gave this open. So kudos for some uh, thought process of using CARES money to pay for this, because uh, we could relate it to the CARES money, the advocacy with our town state rep and, and uh, uh, State Senator. So thank you, Mr. Town Manager. And just a point. Um, I agree with you, Council Katrona. I, I don't want to spend money on something that might not, but we do know how hot it was to, to get. There's not a lot of options with a registry now. They close the ones on the Mass Pike. You can't do anything at the one on the Mass Pike, at least going westbound. Um, and if it's a destination, if one person wants to come in and buy a pizza from one of the pizza shops, that's money to that business owner in town that may keep them here. And it's sale, it's restaurant meals tax, 7%.
with an extra percentage goes to the town as well. So uh, if it's one or 10 pizzas and a couple cups of coffee, that's money that goes back to the town. So, so it might be pennies, but as a good friend of mine that used to work in the town says, if you watch your pennies, the dollars will follow. And uh, that's what we're trying to do to make sure it goes. So thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Uh, any other comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, roll call. Councillor Lazo? Yes. Councillor Marchetti? Yes. Councillor Ryan? Yes. Councillor Steves? Yes. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Catrona? No. Councillor Daniel? Yes. Councillor Dow? Yes. And Councillor Jovan? Yes. Motion carries eight to one. Item 23, vote to ratify amendment number five between the town of Southbridge and Whitewater Incorporated to amend the March 9th, 2000 operations maintenance and management services agreement by adding a new section 11.1.3 and extending the term of the agreement through June 30th, 2021. Is there a motion? No move. Is there a second? second. Mr. Town Manager. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have Heather here. Heather Blakely from DBW as well. Uh, this is something that she had brought to my attention. As I understand it, this contract was continued uh, initially to um, coincide with my arrival. Um, COVID has played a little bit of a factor and they're coming to a close, I believe, on negotiations, but they do need some additional time because the, the extension would expire, I believe, tomorrow and that they would be looking now to actually make the date coincide with the end of the fiscal year for uh, easy budget planning going forward. And I hope I said that correctly, uh, Ms. Blakely, but Ms. Blakely is here to answer any other questions um, that you may have about the extension. Thank you. Heather? Um, so the town manager is absolutely correct. We extended it to be, um, coincide with the fiscal year. Um, that's when we're hoping the new contract will start, um, maybe even potentially just to start one month prior, depending on if it's a new contractor um, coming in or if it's the existing contractor for a 30-day overlap. Um, we have to actually build that into the contract schedule also. Um, there is no uh, increase in fee. They're going to do it at the same fee that we're currently at. Um, it's just a time extension to allow us to finalize the contract documents and the bidding process. Um, that is moving forward. We hope to see that out to bid um, within the next month. And um, it is a quite longer term bidding process because we do have to allow the bidders to come in and see the facilities. We had a meeting this week on the bidding process and um, toward the facilities with the engineer so we could get a better sense on how we are going to move forward with the bidding. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Thank you. Roll call. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. Councilor Ryan? Yes. Councilor Steve? Yes. Councilor Adam? Yes. Councilor Catrona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Dow? Yes. Councilor Govan? Yes. And Councilor Lazo? Yes. Motion carries. I'm 24. Discussion regarding the status of the air condition of the Town Hall Council Chambers area and hiring of the engineer to complete engineering at approximate estimated cost of 19900 and take any action. So I'll open this up, Mr. Uh, Council Marchetti. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had a discussion at our uh, DPW subcommittee meeting and then a motion was made to recommend that we approve this or have some discussion on this at the town council. I think the feeling was that the only way we're going to know how much it's going to cost to install air conditioning at the town hall is to have an engineer uh, do the study. <clears throat> and it was voted four to zero to send it up. Thank you. Council Lazo? Yeah, I'm going to be voting no tonight. Um... I think air, air conditioning, the chamber is a nice to have, not a have to have. And as long as we have deteriorating road sidewalks and various other capital improvements, 
This one here, air conditioning, the political uh, dome, so to speak, is not a priority in my world. I really think that we have to take care of the people on the street, make sure that we have the things that we need before we start getting the luxuries of air conditioning at council chamber. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go to Heather first, and then I'll go Council Control and Council Dow. Heather, I apologize. Uh, you want to just talk through the process about what we had done uh, on that, and then we'll go from there. So I did provide um, to the subcommittee, and I did send it out to all the counselors as well. I'm sure uh, most of you have it, but I'll just give a quick overview. Um, we have reached out since July 2020 when this discussion started to six different contractors um, with varying degrees that would be installers, um, some local, some not so local, some suggestions, some bigger ones um, that do HVAC and AC projects kind of exclusively for commercial. Um, none of those six were able to, were willing to give me a hard price to be able to install it. One of them who um, is our current vendor that does all our maintenance did say, well, if if I was looking at this, my estimated price would be between 100 and 125,000. Um, I, I think we've, I've already said that number to the council previously. In addition, I went to another local supplier of equipment and asked them to look into the equipment and whether we could just add a coil and add a condenser to our existing systems and how much that would cost. Um, they were able to actually track down our system um, when it was installed. Our system was installed, was installed back in 1984. Um, and basically when Train looked looked at the units that we currently had, they said we, they would not, because they are train units or two train air handlers, they would not recommend doing any modification to the existing ones, that they would need to be replaced with brand new equipment um, at, at that time. In addition, there were some other investigated items that were done. Um, at one point, it was suggested that the existing ductwork was already insulated. Um, we have since determined that it wasn't. And it, there was also some question whether we had three-phase power. We were able to determine that there are three-phase power coming into the building, but we can't determine whether the existing panels would be adequate enough or not for um, a new, con new condensing units. Um, I also reached out to the building department and they had some requirements and basically their requirements are that in order to do this upgrade, we will need to hire an electronic, electrical engineer and calculate the loads and verify the loads of the existing system can handle it. We're also required to file construction documents in accordance with the building code and um, international mechanical code requiring engineering calculations and plans by a registered professional engineer. Um, mechanical engineer. Um, they will also be looking for how we're going to run the power and how we're going to run the ducts. And uh, they will also be looking to see if our new equipment's going to meet the required air changes or if it triggers requiring, if the upgrade is that large that we have to upgrade to those new standards that we were just talking about at the RMV. Um, I also, met with the design engineer when they were out here looking at the RMV. He came over and gave me a uh, walk walked around the building and said, okay, I understand what you're trying to do. Um, let me give you a proposal that you can consider um, if you needed to hire a design engineer. That proposal was also provided um, as an attachment to the document. Um, and that is where that 19,900 number comes from that's in the agreement. So we do have one price from a design engineer has looked at the system and is willing to work for the town and provide a report and options to the town um, regarding the existing system, the condition and upgrades and what recommendations could be done for air handling AC in the building, in the in council chambers. All right, Council Dow. Council Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. <clears throat> so I understand a uh, lot of uh, council didn't want to support that regarding the money to prove different things for the citizens. But I believe all the old council, they never improve anything in town. 
Uh, I live 22 years in town. I have nothing see it was improved regarding the road, regarding the school, regarding the town, regarding anything. I only hear fighting, yelling, and nothing was done. Uh, I believe if your brain, no pain in it, your body's fine. And the town hall is the brain of the town. Uh, I understand I need a new window. If we fix it, we will save heat and electric. Uh, it's another way to look at the AC too. It doesn't have to be used the old uh, system. Above the building inspector building is a flat roof where it used to be an old fire truck that was black with a wall. It's an empty room. I don't know what's in the back. We can always use a new system, a new dock, and install a new location. We don't have to use an, an old system to make a, a, you know, seems like, oh, we want to save the money, uh, the citizen money, uh, and we use it somewhere else. The citizen want to go to the meeting, they want to feel safe and comfortable. And with the coronavirus we get, and all these virus, and uh, our town council member, they're, uh, I call it homeless. So one day they're going to meet at the police station, one day at the uh, airport, every day different place because we don't have a good place to meet. But regarding it for us, for the next generation, for the next people, for the citizens, they're going to go for the meeting, for open public. Other board members, they want to meet there. It's not about only few, few count council and political, they're going to look good. No, about that town hall has been there for a year. Nobody's funded dime because none of the council, the town council got the muscle and got strong to say, no, we need to spend a couple of dollars to fix it. No, we want to save the money for the citizen. We don't want to waste it. That's not right. Uh, last year, how many town council, he carried a fan from home to get a little bit cool on that building. None of the uh, citizen came and meet there. Where's our safety for our citizen when they go meet there for the virus and the corona and all that? You got to look at it a different way, not about the uh, money you're going to spend there, about our town, it's the brain of the town is affected. Uh, it's not uh, safe to meet in it. This is the way I look at it. I'm not looking for $100,000 just to waste it for the, the citizen. No, I'm looking for the safety. I'm looking for uh, not any board to be homeless. You know, we're homeless. We don't have a place to meet, pretty much. I want to say it that way. And, and, and all council, they're all the same. Oh, I want to save the money. I want to spend them somewhere else. Show me what has done to the town last 20 years. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I put a lot of thought into this. Um, I know many of you don't know what this is like, but I have sat in there and felt my face literally melting off, like my makeup running down my face because of how hot it gets. But that's not enough for me at this time to justify spending this amount of money. Look, I, I want I want to have a town hall that's cooled. I, it, it's unbearably hot at times. However, we have been spending a lot to make improvements in this town. And at least this council, I can't speak, I'm not gonna speak about previous councils, but this council has made it clear we're going to make investments in our community. We've done that. We've invested in our roads where we just invested into our RMB. We're making investments. We're not a do nothing council. And I, I, that kind of, that irked me a little bit that that comment was made. Um, but I, I want to have the town hall, air, the, the council chambers properly air conditioned, but one, it's expensive just to even replace the system. And two, as our DPW director pointed out, there may be other upgrades we are going to have to make if we go down this route. And at this time, I just can't justify spending that type of money on a want. It's not a need, it's a want. Um, that's it, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you. Council Lazo? Council Lazo? You're muted there, Councillor. I know you like to be heard, so you're going to unmute yourself. All right, thank you very much. Um, to, to the previous speaker, my good friend and Councillor Joe Dow, when someone says the town has not done anything, I feel like, geez, I have to say something. A $64 million high, middle high school building, a facility, is a big job that we did. 
Um, and I can say that I was on a building committee with uh, Councilor Joe Van, and I was chairman of the building committee. We put three hundred thousand dollars up to refurbish the airport. We're in the airport business. We're putting our money where our mouth is. When you turn around and you look at various things like ten bonding over ten million dollars <throat> for roads, I think that that's a full commitment. The refurbishing of the sewer department is another uh, commitment to infrastructure. <clears throat> I think the, 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 where the tire hits the road is, I'm not against air conditioning the town hall. It's just that when you buy a car and you, you say, geez, I want air conditioning, I want AM, FM radio, you order a Cadillac. If you can afford the Cadillac, that's not a problem. I just don't think Southfish can afford the Cadillac. And I think there are other priorities. And, and the priorities are these other capital improvement projects that we have on the books, we look at them and we say, we can do this one, we can't do that one. If it was a perfect world and a part of bottomless part of money, I would say, let's get everything done. But the thing is when you have choices between one thing or air conditioning, I just don't think air conditioning the, the chamber is a priority. The offices are air conditioned, but the, but, but the, the hall, I think it's just a nice to have for the one month out of the year that it's unbearable. We used to go and say, let's do one month, uh, one meeting a month during the summer. Um, there's a hundred ways to solve a problem, but I just have to agree with uh, Councilor Ryan. This is a nice to have. This isn't a have to have. And uh, moving forward with that, I, I don't have a problem, but I coming from the building uh, arena, I know what this study is going to tell you. It's going to be more than you can afford to do. So what I'm feeling is the nice to have can be put on the back burner. You're going to go to the voters and say, I need a new fire station. Is the air conditioning more important than the fire station? We have to somehow put it on the, the value scale and make the decision as civic leaders. And that's why I just don't think my opinion that this is a nice to have, not a have to have. I'm the guy that's going to sit in that chamber and it's going to be warm and I don't mind doing it. Thank you. And Councilor Dowd, you had your hand up, then Councilor Steve. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for you. It's not about the AC, about that chamber is being like this for a lot of years and in the same uh, energy. We don't want to spend the money. If that was done 10, 15, 20 years ago, we wouldn't be uh, paying that much right now. Sooner or later, it has to be done. If it's not today, tomorrow. If it's not tomorrow, next year. Right now, that chamber is not safe to be meeting on it regarding the airflow and, uh, and the court and the building. If you want to talk about the building and safety for the citizen and, and, and all these kind of things. And, and regarding the window we need to be replaced, the electric, the, the building is old and it have to be done. When, when are we waiting for? When, when it will cost 300000 the next five years when everything uh, go up every year? The council that they delay it, it is not the time to fix it. It's not the time to upgrade it. When you're gonna build a new town hall? I think I don't think so. So it need to be done sooner or later. Uh, you know, never. I don't care. Like you guys may be thinking, I need the AC. No, I work outside all day long. But other people, they're gonna come there. They have to be comfortable. The citizen to be able to see the meeting, to 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 able to attend uh, the safety and all these stuff. You know, it's not about me. Like you say. Uh, you know, you're going to sit there and swear. I'm going to sit there too. That's not the point. The point is it needs to be done sooner or later. I don't know what we're waiting for. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Steves. Um, as, I, as I have said, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I've said in previous meetings, both here and in subcommittee, um, I'm in agreement with Councilor Lazar and Councilor Ryan. Um, in this particular case, I think this is a situation where while we do need to end up doing this, I think we need to look at the town hall as a whole because it has about 16 other needs that can, need to get done too. We need to clarify exactly what needs to get done, how we're going to be doing it, when we can do it, and put it together into one, one project that fixes town hall as, a ta as the town building that it really is and deserves to be treated as. Not in little piecemeal pieces that may end up tripping over each other as we fix other projects. You know, we've I, and when it comes to town hall immediate priorities, I would argue that the that the windows are a ho far higher priority than than air conditioning, and even that is such a hugely expensive project. We've already talked about this at some length in the past. 
Um, that's one of the reasons why I think this all needs to be kind of looked at as a whole, not in this little piecemeal agreement. So I'm I'm siding with with Council Eliza. Thank you, Council Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, Council Steve throw my uh, stole my thunder. I agree also that uh, we should look at the town hall as a whole. Uh, I. I understand what Councillor Dow was saying, and, and I do agree with him. I think it does need to be done. I would like to see that area air conditioned. However, um, I also recognize that an awful lot of other projects, the electricity, the wiring needs to be done. Uh, bringing that building into the 21st century with Wi-Fi needs to be done. Uh, the windows definitely need to be looked at. Uh, structural integrity needs to be looked at. The building is over 100 years old. Um, so I would be more in favor of looking at the building as a whole and seeing what needs to be done as a whole and uh, perhaps uh, develop a series of steps that need to be done in a similar way to the uh, road improvement plan where we're, where we're attacking it uh, piecemeal, but in a, in a cogent manner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, then I'll go Council Catron and then Council Adams. Go ahead, Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm not looking necessarily to weigh in on the the HC, uh, the AC, the HVAC issue for the chamber, but I just want to point out um, we've had a couple of conversations about air conditioning and uh, the heat and things at town hall. And when we talk about um, the council coming in or the public, I, I want to make sure that people remember the people that are spending the vast majority of time in that building are our staff. And when you're taking any of these items into consideration, please include them because I know they seem to get omitted during some of these conversations, but they spend a lot of time in there during the day. The department heads do come to a lot of these meetings at night. And I do think that if you're gonna look at some of these issues, you should look at it, the building as a whole. It was mentioned by several counselors um, because we wanna make sure that the, the council's safe when they come in and, and the climate is appropriate for them the citizenry and the uh, staff as well. So I just want to point that out. Too. Thank you. Thank you, Town Manager. Uh, Council Catron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, I think quite a bit's been said um, on both sides. I, I personally cannot support this this evening. Um, I, I, I just think it's it's just not the right time. There's money. Uh, this money can can be better spent elsewhere right now. Thank you. Thank you. And who's Councilor Adams? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I was going to bring up the windows, especially when we put that money aside to, to have them looked at. And, um, you know, I think uh, as the town manager said, yeah, we got to take into account everybody. Does this, this investment um, help everybody within that town all itself? <clears throat> and uh, there's quite a few other things that need to happen with that town hall. Obviously, it's a beautiful building, but it's one that needs to be taken a look at. I believe myself and uh, Councilor Steves mentioned in the past to the previous town manager about grants for historical buildings um, that, that are out there as well uh, that can be possibly looked at. And if you, I am one of those individuals that uh, brings my own personal fan in there during that period of time. And it's not really because the chambers were so hot, it's to two individuals sit to the left and to the right of me that raises the temperature level up a little bit higher. And that would be, uh, um, well, those councilors know who they are. So that's all I've got to say. <laughs> Council Lazo. Just a quick history, historical lesson on this building. It's not falling down. Nazo Construction repointed the whole building in 1988. Um, the slate roof was all replaced with the copper gutters back in 85. Now think about how many years we're talking. The heating system was replaced back in the late 80s. They ran the ductwork up to the chamber. Council did not want to air condition the chamber at that time. Uh, Florence Chandler redid all the stained glass windows back then. So back then there was a council, much like this council, got things done. But the thing is, nothing's forever. There have to be constant maintenance to this building. But at the same time, the fire station is more of an ailing building than ours, than, than our town hall. So I think, again, it's called prioritizing, and I think we, that's what we have to do. And this is not a priority. Thank you, Councilor. And I just, uh, I think everybody else had an opportunity to speak. Uh, Councilor Marchetti, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
I'm going to have to agree with Councillor Dow on this one. Uh, I think the town, the council chambers, does need air conditioning. It's not just for the councillors; it's also for the employees that work at the town hall and residents who want to come in there. I've sat in meetings in there in the summertime where residents have left the meetings because they just can't take the heat in there. Uh, so I'm going to have to side with uh, Councillor Dow on this one. We need to at least study it, and that's all this is about. This isn't committing to it. It's just doing a study on how, what it's going to take to do it. And maybe there's some alternative ways, uh, not necessarily uh, air conditioning, but maybe we could also study some alternatives to cooling off the buildings. I've been in buildings, I was in some buildings in California where they were using water, water filtration systems to cool off the rooms and, and they worked pretty well. So, but I do think we do need this study. And so I'm, I'm, I'm siding with Councilor Dow on this one. Thank you. Councilor Dow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, you know, if you sit there and look, the light, the camera, the TVs, the audio, citizens, they cannot listen to us or hear us from outside, the the, the AC, the, uh, in the future, the, the air circle, the safety. I mean, it's not about only our condition. I need to fix that town hall to be safe for everybody. It's not uh, like, like, again, me, I'm here today, tomorrow, maybe I'm not. It's going to be forever for everybody. That town hall, like Mr. Lado say, they did their last work on in 1980 something. I was maybe uh, five years old, 10 years old, whatever. But the point is when we waiting for to fix it. When? This is the question. When the council, they're going to get the muscle, I don't want to say different word, to stand up and say, I'm sorry, uh, citizen, we're doing it for you for the next generation, for the next hundred generation, not for only today and for me, it's for everybody else, for the safety of the public, for the safety of the employee, and to have a nice town hall like every other town around us. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councils? I, I just want, want to say that, um, I know at the DBW subcommittee meeting, I was one of those that said that I, I, things at town hall have to be addressed. But I think we need to take a look at the whole building itself. And uh, I agree, air conditioning. But I, I just want to say, throw out right here, capital plans, right? We talked about this in capital planning and budget sessions all three years that I was on council. So what, we, what was allocated to the town hall for repairs? Nothing done. Town hall side series repairs, $64,380. Nothing done yet. Uh, improve uh, town hall rear handicapped entrances, FY 2018, account still open. Uh, there's also another one in here for town hall. Uh, so we had the side repairs. So we have $100,000 sitting there right now waiting to be used for repairs. And this is no reflection on our current town manager at all. FY 2013, town hall renovations. Account number 6339, balance 59,278 to ongoing project for carpeting, windows, and other improvements, right? Um, so uh, town hall repairs, uh, June 15th, 2015, $30,000. So we can keep throwing money into a town hall account. And, and again, it all goes to a leadership management pro process that we had before. And I, I assume that we will work to have, let's kick it back. You, The counselors earlier tonight talked about the facilities plan. That facilities plan was one of those plans that address all town buildings. And so what we had was somebody that just said, oh, the, it said, and, and we talked about this throughout our budgets before. Oh, that, that plan said uh, HVAC units at a police station had to be repaired or replaced, put $30,000 there or whatever the amount was. Chief goes, Chief Woodson, to his credit, goes and has an expert come in and say, hey, take a look at this. Uh, didn't have to be done. So I think we have to look at the whole building. If we have to, because we're talking about electrical, let's come up with a concrete plan to uh, take, and I will quote this, and I know a couple of my fellow counselors sitting here today know how upset I was over a step that was broken at Town Hall. One step took me 11 months to have those steps repaired through the town manager 
that cost a couple hundred bucks. So let's take a look at the whole entire town hall and come up with a comprehensive plan to say from the entrances to the electrical, to the air conditioning, to the windows, because I know, uh, I think we had this argument at budget two years ago. We had somebody that came and said, I want to do engineering for uh, windows and it's going to cost $35,000. And it was on the budget request. And I said, Oh, you want $35,000, but you still have a hundred thousand dollars sitting there. You haven't done anything with. So let's come up with a plan as a council and say, this town manager, we want to take a look at this whole entire building and list it into the priorities of where we want. Again, fire station, uh, town hall and roads. That, that's where we're at right now. So I'm not in favor of this right now. I have no problem kicking it back to a subcommittee to say, hey, look, come up and discuss what the plan of attack is going to be for that building, uh, for the entire building, though. Because, again, uh, there's money allocated, but no plans to fix a lot of this stuff. I think the oil tank was supposed to be removed, too, and that's been in engineering for I don't know how long. So uh, let's uh, kick it back with the new town manager here. He's been here six months now. But uh, let's have them take a look at this with that facilities plan. Another thing on the on the list, but I know this council will get it done. I mean, because we do have uh, the manager in place that will, will help us. With that. But it's my two cents on it. I, I have no problem with it, but let's let's do it right because too often we do it uh, halfway and, and don't succeed. So, Council Dow. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe I don't know the past. You search it, you look at it. Most of the council right now, they was in the past. Maybe the vote on what you're talking. Maybe I did not was in the political at that time, and I don't know what was voted on or not. If this money sitting somewhere, we just have to look where is it. And it, it needs to be done a lot of things in the town. And like you say, his money was issued, but nobody use it, nobody look at it. We just sit there and say, we want to save the citizen money, but actually the money is there so, and nobody's using it to improve it for safety and other things for the town. Uh, and also what Council Adams say is a historic building, I think, and we can look for a grant from the state that will help us do on that building. I'm not sure if that's correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Adams? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just uh, Councilor Dow, uh, to be honest with you, it, 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 this what, what uh, the chair had read off is something that we just found probably after our first budget in 2019. 2019, we found by half a million dollars just sitting there. Not that it hadn't been discussed before, but it was just one of those things where it popped up and some of that money went into stabilization last year. Uh, I believe it was stabilization last year and some other, and we actually got some of the work done. So it wasn't that... Um, it wasn't that we just, you know, knew about it. It was something we we tripped over and fell over and saw it, and, uh, and then we addressed it pretty hard. And, and that's where it came from. And I believe it was Miss Clements um, who had brought up about the windows. Who they came to us with more money for windows. and said, "Didn't we already have this money?" And it was still set aside. So it, you know, it's just one of those things. But I don't. I, I completely understand where you come from, Councilor Dow, and. Uh, and though I don't support this tonight, I, I do support the the, the future of uh, take a look at this beautiful town hall. Thank you. Thank you. Council Laza? I don't misunderstand. I, I do agree with what Council Dow is saying. My thing is, in the middle of the year, usually it's, it's a knee-jerk reaction and it's a Band-Aid approach. If you do it with the planning and development into the actual capital improvement plan or a building committee, then you look at it holistically all of a sudden you find out there's more that has to happen than just AC. And, you know, like the windows and closing the envelope, they call it, in construction before you even look at the AC. But, I mean, I'm, I'm game to work on it. I just don't, I just can't support this here tonight. I think uh, what Joe Dow was saying is correct. I just think I have a different approach going to the budgetary and making sure that now with the new manager that things actually get extended for the projects that were appropriated by the by the council that's in it. Thank you. Thank you, Council Dow. Thank you, Mr. Trey. Through you. The whole idea is not only the AC. Maybe I'm a new counselor and I don't know how to approach things sometimes in the right way. But maybe my stubborn uh, way 
now will open a door to say we have money sitting on the side, nobody use it, and we need to look at the whole picture and we go all together move forward with. But the language is we don't have the money, the money, we don't want to spend it on that thing. We can use it somewhere else, but actually it's a money sitting there. And some of us, we don't know about it or we don't search, we don't do our job. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm happy either if you guys don't improve tonight, the 19,000 for the engineer, but we can talk about it in the future for the whole town hall idea, but the least we found first a step to continue after that. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, uh, Council Ryan, any? Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, through you. I make a motion that we refer this back to the DPW uh, subcommittee for further discussion and for further discussion about uh, town hall upgrades and remodeling. I second that. And a motion is second to refer back to DPW. Any discussion on that? Council Marchetti? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. I have no problem bringing this back to DPW to, to, to study the whole building, the whole facility study, as long as we're going to be able to do that. We weren't allowed to do it on the school. I'm not criticizing anybody. I'm just saying that you thought it was too early to do that on the school and DPW combining the two departments. So if as long as we're going to be able to study it, I have no problem taking it up. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's it's uh, right. I, I think we just have to say, uh, come up with a, uh, a plan and, and talk with the town manager about how it will fit into the overall plan to and the DPW director if we are going to uh, study this what would be the what would be the thought process what would be the steps that we would need to go through so um, yes any further discussion roll call Councillor Ryan yes Councillor Steves yes Councillor Adams yes Councillor Catrona? Yes. Councillor Daniel? Yes. Councillor Dow? Yes. Councillor Jovan? Yes. Councillor Lazo? Yes. And Councillor Marchetti? Yes. Item 25, vote to approve the home rule legislation for additional liquor licenses. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, Mr. Town Manager? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, shortly after I got here, I, I wound up tech, um, reading some documents from the, the liquor board and I did ask to come before them and brought up an issue about looking at our liquor licenses currently here in town. And one of the reasons I brought it to their attention was really looking at how to expand and create opportunities for economic development. Um, I did send a memo that's in your packet. I, I did speak with them. I did talk with our legislators about this um, briefly with one of our uh, attorneys at the time about strategy. And then I've been working with Councillor Adams as well as Ms. Dean and Mr. Rumsey uh, about ideas how to go forward with this. And we, you know, based on my conversations with the legislators, we talked about a home rule petition to look for a number of licenses. And I'm sure Councilor Adams will tell you what happened. Um, and, and it also came up, I think, um, when we were in GenGov as well. I believe I went to GenGov, didn't it, Councilor Steves? Because we had the question about the number of licenses. Um, if you ever play hearts, you shoot for the moon uh, to try and get everything. And uh, we were looking at doing that with regard to the number of licenses. But after a conversation Councillor Adams had with one of the legislators, we've, we've scaled that back. But all in all, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is um, bring in some additional licenses. Um, we, I know from time to time with my conversations with Mr. Rumsey that we, we do have interest from uh, people outside of the community looking to come in and open a restaurant. And we also think there may be opportunities for existing restaurant owners that may want to um, broaden their offerings and appeal. At the end of the day, um, this can help attract other businesses to come in once they see things happening in Southbridge. And this does boost our local receipts if we're bringing more money in and more people are dining. And there is a prior study um, that was done 
that shows that we do lose a significant number of dining dollars uh, within a three to five mile radius of this town uh, that people are going outside of the town um, looking for what would one might be considering a, a sit down or upscale casual restaurant. So I think there's a need uh, and I think this gives us the tools to create those opportunities and bring additional economic development into the community. And with that, I would turn it over to either Councilor Steege or Councilor Adams for further comment. Um, which council wants to go first? Councilor Steege? Councilor Adams? Councilor Adams? I'll, yeah, I'll let Councilor Steves. I didn't hear it from him yet. Go, go ahead, Councilor Steves. He's yielding to you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's see if I have any notes in front of me somewhere. Um, I know I per personally, I have no problem with doing this. I think the idea of, I, I know back when you talked to Jenga, we were talking originally about 15 and you talked about scaling it down like half. Um, I think that as long as we set it up in such a way, it's like, I think the intention is to do for real restaurants, not bars. And I'd like to see a fair variety of things that, that we look at, not, not just the same run of the mill stuff that we seem to keep getting. Um, it just, as long as we take a look at the idea of, it seems in the past that we have seen people who will say, oh, anything that comes in, comes down the pike, whether it be at the, the 15th pizza place. Um, I'd love to see something new like Indian restaurants and other stuff and, and try, to, try, try to do some revitalization um, quite honestly, I don't think it would necessarily be uh, part of this legislation, but I would love to see eventually getting some sort of maybe a, a pot cafe in there that would be a restaurant as well, but that's kind of beside the point at this point, um, since they're not quite legal yet. Um, but anyway, um, I just, I think this is a good idea. I think if we get, if we can get them, I've, from what I've seen from some of the other towns that I've covered, it's not always an easy process to get these extra uh, licenses for these purposes. Um, but I, I just think we should do it. So that's all I really have to say at the moment. Thank you, Councilor Adams. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, asked a question to Councilor Steves. When did you have this in the meetings for General Governor? I apologize if I missed that. Uh, let's see, I think it was, I don't think it was the last one. I think it was the meeting before the last one. Okay. Right, I apologize. It, I remember we were talking at one of your subcommittees too. So yeah, maybe, that, yeah. Maybe, maybe okay, I apologize. Your sorry. meeting and not mine. Yeah. So I, I just to give a quick history to the counselors and, and to the members out there that then back in September 2019, the Liquor Board sent uh, the town council uh, a letter asking and the, supporting that the town council move forward with trying to find some way to, to get some more uh, restaurant licenses in town, uh, full restaurant licenses. From there in um, November 19, 2019, PND addressed it through, through our meeting uh, where everybody seemed to be in favor of making sure that we don't get tavern licenses or anything like that, but it was full blown, full restaurant licenses. Uh, December 10th, we asked the, the, the previous town manager to take a look at it for us a little bit. Um, and on December 10th at PND, there was no update. I, uh, one, one area that the liquor board asked us to look into was to, can we remove the quota system? We cannot remove the quota system. It's based on 1,000 uh, persons within our town. And we currently have 17, actually we have 18, uh, but we, the way, way it works is if, uh, uh, when that number 18 goes away or no longer exists, it will actually end up going back to the state. Um, and then September, October, myself and the current town manager had a discussion about this. And then November 5th, 2020, uh, he also sent a letter, uh, a memo to us as well. And, uh, and then we go on from there. F Senator Fatman and, and Representative Durant are all in favor of this. I will say that I talked to Ralph at the ABCC, uh, found out a lot more information about how this process will go. They put me in touch with their legal uh, guru over there and where a lot of towns are currently applying for the home rule petition um, it, in, and back in 2006, the town applied for, I believe it was eight licenses. And it was specific to locations and addresses within the town. Well, with us creating, uh, Mr. Ramsey and, and uh, uh, the current town manager creating the flex overlays over at the AO and the Globe Village and also the, the central core itself, uh, what we noticed on some of these drafts was they, they, they offered up these towns requested for certain areas, certain districts within their town itself. 
So if you take a look at the home rule petition itself, that's a boilerplate uh, petition based on a lot of, I would say, drafts that we've received over this period of time. And uh, th there was 15. I think we went from 10 to 12 to 15. And then we went down to seven because obviously the, we common sense had to prevail about it. And they are hard to get, but they're not um, impossible to do. And if we're looking to grow our town economically, and we're losing business because people are going to local communities to go to the restaurants. And we're losing businesses because we no longer have restaurant licenses themselves. We want to afford those businesses an opportunity to succeed within our town and bring business back over here. So, you know, and there are some, some places that are being built up right now that are, are going to be looking for liquor licenses down the road as well. Um, and the liquor board would be the one who controls that uh, with the issuance of these liquor licenses. And they belong to the town themselves. So if we get four, we get seven of these, they belong to the town. So they cannot be just transferred over to anybody or they cannot be sold with the business per se. They, they have to be sent back to the town for the liquor board to be able to do the transfer, just like any other liquor license anyways. But, um, you know, and then I do want to say that uh, within this petition, uh, I know Ms. Dean uh, and I, Mr. Rumsey had put in the redevelopment authority, we received $5,000 instead of, you know, they'd received the $1,000 permit and the $5,000 would go to the redevelopment authority. Again, I'm a big fan and advocate of the redevelopment authority because I think they could do a lot for this town. And by educating them with the grants that we're receiving right now uh, that we just got approved for, educating them, educating the staff on the redevelopment authority and being able to give them seed money instead of taxpayer, direct taxpayer money, uh, I think this may go a long way for the town itself. Um, I do know uh, we had a, it was a three to zero vote at the plan and development with two um, town councilors um, partially recusing themselves for a little bit. That was a great discussion to have, but it was uh, it was one to have, I guess. And uh, you know, and I hold their thoughts in, in high regard as well with the, when it comes to this. But I just want to give you a little bit of history. I'm a big supporter of this. Uh, we've been working on this for a few years, and now we have a town manager. And we have a planner and we have uh, a CDBG coordinator who are pushing these things forward for our town. Uh, and, and I just appreciate the backup on that as well. So uh, from there, I'll answer any questions or, or to you, uh, Mr. Chair. And Council Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you um, to whoever can answer this question. Um, uh, I know the formula for how, um, licenses from um, recreational marijuana establishments is based off of liquor licenses. Does this affect the formula for Southbridge and does this also in turn increase the amount of facilities we can have for marijuana in Southbridge if this goes through? Uh, I, was, I know Councilor Adams worked on that, but we set a bylaw with a number of, because we set a number of bylaw, then it's not tied into the number of uh, liquor uh, licenses. Am I correct on that, Councilor Adams? We did, Mr. Chair, but I also believe it's on Section 15, which is package stores, not uh, not on-premise drinking. Yeah, Thank you is. for the clarification. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Thank and you. I may be wrong, so don't hold me to it, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. But I think because we did a bylaw, we, we set the number that could be there as opposed to the number per the package store. Council Adams? We, we also did add in that fudge factor. Um, the town is only required to have two um, marijuana retail, but we built it up to four just in case our town would grow in that area of the, the package stores. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councilors have any questions, comments, concerns? So just one point of clarification. So when you said that we're allowed 17, but we have 18, so if one goes, so I think there's a couple of establishments that are on that list that close down. Uh, so if they turn in their license, then it's gone, or do they have the ability to sell that license? Do you know, Mr. Town Manager? I do not. I think some of those are governed by population. So what happens is if in some instances, a license could be essentially grandfathered. Um, I can check with the ABCC to see if once you fall below that threshold and somebody gives one up, what happens to it? 
and I can send an email out to the council, but I do not know the answer to that right now. Yeah, because I, I think right now, I think there's maybe even four on here that are not in operation right now. So if you could follow, follow up on that. Um, I know one's a, well, uh, two, there's one, one restaurant at least, two restaurants. And I know one was part of a prior hearing. So, um, yeah, so that, that's like three or four licenses that could be sold in town if they wanted to. But Council Adams? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think one of those may have been from 2006, a special legislative license that was given to them. I'd have to look at from 2006 uh, um, authorization from the state. And so that would actually go back to the state. And I also know fins and tails on the licenses were, works. If something were to happen, uh, it couldn't be passed on to the family. It would have to actually uh, go back to, to the state as well. So. Okay, thank you. Any other counselors? So the recommendation right now is to seek seven through special home legislation. Yes, that's true. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, roll call. Councilor Steves? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Katona? Yes. Councilor Daniel? Yes. Councilor Dow? It's closed or upstairs. I don't know which way I gotta go. Councilor Duran? Yes. Councilor Lazo? Upstairs. Councilor Marchetti? Yes. And Councilor Ryan? Yes. Item 26, vote to approve the submission of the staffing for adequate fire and emergency response safer grant for the hiring staff and of four firefighters for the Southbridge Fire Department. No move. Second. Okay. So this was one of those that, uh, Councilor uh, Lazo, you uh, you have anything you want to comment on before we start? Oh, uh, yeah. The, um, we, due to the, uh, the timing of this, uh, we did not have a subcommittee meeting. And uh, we moved it right up to council. Yeah, okay. hold on. I just gotta look for Deputy Chief Hulick so I can give him presenter status. Mr. Town Mayor, do you have anything you wanna add before we turn it over to the fire department? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have met on uh, more than one occasion with Deputy Chief Hulick and Chief Normandin about this. I know <clears throat> the town has submitted this in the past um, and my understanding this time around, um, if we are awarded the grant, it would be no cost to the town for the first three years. Um, and then we would be in a position in year four. Um, it would be on us if we wanted to go forward with the, the four firefighters that they're looking to get. Um, I, I use this several times offline, uh, but, you know, Many of us may have grown up playing hockey, and if you followed Wayne Gretzky, you you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Um, this is an opportunity to get um, additional staffing. Something we can try and work it into the budget. One would hope that four years out, that we'll be able to, through economic development and increases in state aid, and you see changes coming through this administration, that we'll be in a position to absorb those individuals when they come on. Um, you know, I, I look at the operation that they're running right now, and I know at any given time they're down a couple of uh, firefighters on their existing uh, complement. So that means they're spending additional monies on OT right now just to say at full staffing. So I, I, I can see a need based on the conversations that I've had, as well as just my initial um, time coming into the town. It's right across the street. I've chatted with some of the firefighters. I've had an opportunity to watch some of the calls. And one day I was there uh, early on, um, they had two ambulance calls and they had a, uh, uh, a traditional 911 call where they had to run one of the fire trucks. And with six people on staff, it makes it very difficult to deploy yourselves all around. Fortunately, the, uh, I, I believe it was a false alarm on, on for the fire trucks, but you know, you could have a given situation at some point where you have legitimate calls for all three apparatus and you're going to need that additional person. So 
I, I think it's worth the application. I know we've done it in the past, so I would uh, I would be in favor of submitting the application. And with that, I'll turn it over to the chief and deputy chief. Norman. Uh, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, as you'll see on your screen, uh, we have a few of our uh, my firefighters on. Um, this is how important this is to uh, to the fire department. Um, as I've said in previous years, to uh, actually pretty much this same group, um, you know, since I've been the chief in, for the last three years, um, staffing is very important for the town. It's very important for me and the members of the department. Um, as the town manager just alluded, uh, two ambulance calls brings me down to uh, two people left to run a fire truck. Um, I'm going to be blunt and say someone hanging out a window, someone's house on fire with children trapped. I can't do the job with just two people on a fire truck. Um, this one person would be definitely an added plus because then we could go into the front door and do those rescues or that water, put water on the fire with two people on the line, which is traditionally is the way it should be done. Um, we've been caught with our pants down before. We've lucked out. We really truly have lucked out over the years. Um, it's getting dangerous for us. Our nearest mutual aid is a good 12 to 15 minutes away. Our recall, as you'll hear in this very short presentation tonight, um, you know, our recall status isn't as robust as it used to be. Um, but I, I, I think this is the right way to do business um, as we move forward. And, and like I said, uh, two years ago and again last year, um, you know, I'd like to get up to 32 members. Um, that would be eight guys around the clock, 24 seven. Um, and that would be really the ideal way to do business in the town of Southbridge. I will uh, elaborate just one more minute before uh, Deputy Hulick takes over. Um, this is a peer review or part of this grant is a peer review portion of it. So basically what happens is someone like us at 10.06 at night, my side job, I'm gonna read somebody's uh, safer grant. Um, if there aren't so, so many highlights or points of interest that really piques this person's um, interest of moving it forward to the next round, it's gonna go to the circular uh, trash file. Um, I have reached out to a uh, grant writer from Texas uh, just this past couple of weeks. Uh, I sent our grant last year to them. Uh, he gave me some really great input on changing things up a little bit. Um, this person, actually this grant writer was the, uh, the, the member, uh, the person that was hired to write the town of Webster Fire Department's uh, grant, which after eight tries, uh, Webster was finally approved the grant. So, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't put, put the, the paper in front of the person I want to read it, to approve it. Um, and this is a peer review. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all I had. I know uh, Deputy Hulick has a, a five or six uh, slide presentation to give you some numbers to refresh your memories on what we've done in the past. And I truly hope, while I will be here for the duration, um, if there are any questions, but I truly hope we can move this forward. This is time sensitive um, for the end of the week for submission. Uh, we're already working on the narratives and, and the numbers as we speak, but after tonight, uh, we can stop or continue on. So thank you. Thank you. Chief Hulick. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I still do not have the ability to share my screen right now. Hold on. Oh, you know what, I think it goes, hold on. I cut off one of my monitors to do the glare and it must have popped over to that. Yeah, there we go. All right, so thank you for the opportunity to uh, bring this before you. Uh, in the uh, instance of time, uh, generally there is about a two month span between the AFG submission and the safer grant submission. And there's also a fire prevention grant submission. Uh, for some reason this year, they were uh, ready to go all pretty much all at once. There was only about three weeks in between uh, each of the uh, uh, grants rolling out. So uh, we'll go forward with this. So uh, our current staffing, uh, as you're aware, we have four shifts with a supervisor and five firefighters. This has been stagnant for basically the last 20 years. Uh, we have not added any additional positions uh, in that time frame. Uh, when I started in 1999, all the firefighters live within the community along with the call department, which was generally equal of size to the career department. 
So with the average response time for everyone coming back to the station for a fire, a large incident was about three minutes and the majority of the staff, uh, upwards of 40 people, uh, were back at the station. At this point, 20 years later, two thirds of our department lives outside of the community of Southbridge. Uh, the average response time taking everyone's addresses into account is 21 minutes. And we have uh, one firefighter that lives, uh, he does live within the 15 miles, uh, but it takes him 41 minutes to get to the station uh, during these alarms. So we go from 20 years ago, getting most of the people back in about three minutes. Uh, now our average time is 21 minutes and some people trickle in on nearly an hour later. Uh, even relying on mutual aid uh, for the community, it takes the average mutual aid company 15 minutes to get to our scene. So by the time the notifications are made, they assemble their crew to send and get to the scene, it's 15 minutes. So you can see the, uh, the length of time that it takes to get uh, a sufficient complement of people uh, on scene. So what we're facing for new challenges in the upcoming years, uh, at this point, we're anticipating uh, another 200 apartments to be built. Uh, right now, you have the Marcy Street project, which is underway, which is about another 50 units. Uh, there are two phases of projects planned in the Frank and Realty properties uh, that are another 150. And we're also aware of the fact that uh, a property on Mill Street has changed hands and there was an anticipation of housing units being proposed in there as well. So adding more than 200 new units is going to increase our call volume. Just for comparison's sake, the Southbridge Housing Authority property on Charlton Street, that has 115 units. In the last 12 months, we've gone there 149 times for EMS calls alone, and we average about two fire calls a month in there. So just going with uh, some rough numbers like that, we can anticipate as many as uh, 300 more calls just by those apartments that we're sharing. So what we're asking for is the ability to add one additional firefighter EMT per shift. Uh, this year, as well as last year, the federal government has waived the cost share Typically, they uh, request that the fire department or the municipality add 25% uh, of the cost or the cost of one firefighter out of the four. Uh, the first year and second year, 65% in the third year, and then in the fourth year, you assume all costs. At this point, without a cost share, uh, the federal government would be funding each of the three years. The only thing that we would be responsible for is uh, uh, the physicals uh, during the hiring process, which are a little bit more in depth than what we typically do, we uh, have anticipated those costs. So we're looking for you to support the adequate response for this. In all reality, we should be seeking two or three additional firefighters uh, per shift. Uh, even the regional FEMA representative has asked us why we are not. And for the simple fact of we do not believe that two or three additional firefighters is sustainable at the end of the grant. Uh, and we don't wanna have to lose those firefighters. So we believe that one firefighter per shift is a sustainable opportunity. Uh, in past years, we've lost as many as a uh, hundred calls uh, to outside communities because we did not have staff available to respond to them. Uh, last year, with uh, the addition of our uh, CARES funding and uh, FEMA funding, we were able to staff at a minimum of five. And that has allowed us to, in the last year, we only lost 29 calls. So when we have the people, we are capturing those calls. And we believe that having, uh, having this additional firefighter on each shift is going to assist us with that. So the slide you see in front of you now shows the three years uh, the green highlight at the bottom shows that, uh, that there are no cost match in the first three years. Uh, the typical cost share uh, the first year would have been 83,883. The second year would have been 96,339. And the third year at 65% would have been 243,669. Uh, 
It is a large number in the fourth year to absorb at $375,000. Um, but between the uh, calls that we feel that we'll capture you know, with the additional staff and uh, some of the shifting of some overtime funds, and then as the town manager pointed out, some additional growth uh, within the community, we do believe that we'll be able to sustain those positions. So the benefits to Southbridge, obviously, we're gonna have a safer, more efficient response. Fewer calls lost to mutual aid, like I said, at one point, we were losing as many as 100 calls a year. And with the addition of staff that we've had in the past year, we were down to 29. And we're looking to reduce the liability to firefighter injury because of not having enough people on the scene. So that's a presentation. I open up the questions at this point. Question, comments, Council Dow, you have something? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, uh, I think I think I mentioned something in the past regarding when you say you want a new fire station. I said get more ambulance. We need more money on call. So I'm kind of support with that tonight. Uh, I believe uh, we do need more help. Uh, one question for the chief: the new uh, hiring is going to be have to be. Uh, what you hire right now regarding the education to be able to use ambulance or firefighter or could be somebody only for the firefighters i don't know if, if there's any uh uh different here because you're looking only for firefighter or you need it to be working both way uh, the, uh, regarding you know uh, education or license and all that stuff Mr. Mr. Chairman, to answer uh, Mr. Uh, Council um, Dow's uh, question, it would be a dual role would be the best person that we would hire. So a person that had their EMT uh, and we can send them to get trained to be a firefighter or the other way around, they have their firefighter and they should definitely get trained for their EMT. Obviously with this uh, funding, we would like to get paramedics. All four of these positions that we're looking for would like to be paramedics. Uh, but uh, obviously we have to pick from what the people uh, of the applicant pool. Well, one more uh, question. I'd uh, like to see more for the call firefighter uh, or auxiliary. That will probably help, you know, when you have a big fire for clean the holes and moving around for the firefighter, then they can continue their job uh, or duty when they if I have call, not uh, full time, they being, you know, there cleaning, you know, their equipment or the holders or stuff like that. You know, I, I'm not sure if there's uh, any applicant come in as a coal firefighter lately. Uh, I don't know if they know. I know four or five years ago was hard time uh, getting uh, application or apply. Uh, so I don't know if you consider to open that, you know, more for the citizen to try to volunteer for the town too. Thank you. You can do that. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Councilor Steves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first, I wanted to say I was glad to see that uh, that Joe Hulick brought up all the figures because I actually pulled up the the safer grant filing that we did for last year or actually 2019, just for 2019, and the numbers have gone up a little bit, but not hugely, which is good. Um, I was curious, how much money are we spending on overtime this year, and Mr. Chairman? To to, to uh. Councillor Steves, every year we allot $150,000 in overtime. That goes for everything we do from uh, training, EMS training, fire training, um, callbacks, emergency call, emergency ambulance calls, emergency fire calls. It's broken down in by, I can honestly say, probably 20 different line items, but we uh, appropriate about $150,000 a year uh, annually to, uh, for overtime. Okay, and do you know roughly where that stands in terms of how much we've spent so far? So as you know, this year is a little bit different. Uh, we yeah. just got a very large uh, uh, reimbursement from uh, FEMA for our overtime, as the deputy alluded uh, in his presentation, that when we were during this COVID time, we went up to a, a manning of five per shift, which our minimum is four. That was the best way we felt that the uh, operation should run. Um, and we re got reimbursed $122,000. So as we sit right now, 
25 of the of thousand of that will go back to the council reserve, which we did two months ago. Um, mm -hmm. And then the remaining will be available for the rest of the year. Um, I think we'll be we'll be we'll have some left this year, but obviously we can have some discussions about that. I mean, if that's something we could take that money and set it to the side for that three hundred and seventy-five thousand, but I don't think that would be something uh, that we could carry over for a couple of years. Hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I think it's. I, I've have, we kind of. I, I'm glad to see that you guys had had pulled it, brought this forward again, and and kind of summarized things. I remember last year's presentation was quite a bit longer than this, so it's nice to get succinct. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely supportive. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councils? Council Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, to the chief, if, um, if everything were to go through, when do you anticipate uh, these firefighters being on the floor? I'm hoping for July 1st, Mr. Council, Councilor. Um, I do have it budgeted, uh, although uh, budgeted in, in the 2000 in the next fiscal budget um, that was with the, the numbers that I had for last year but now everything's been zeroed out but those positions are in the uh, the staffing the four positions are added to the staffing in the muni system right now and as we get closer so yes I'm looking for July 1st we do have a pool of applicants that are in a holding pattern um, so they know that, uh, you know, we're trying for the safer grant. This was off a hiring process that we had uh, a little over a year ago. So they're still in limbo. Some of them have left and gotten jobs elsewhere, but we will readdress that uh, pool of applicants as soon as we get a, a work. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other councils? Okay. Chief, uh, you no doubt uh, I supported this a couple of years ago. I still support this. Um, I think it's uh, even a little more palatable because there's no match for the first three years. So it makes it a little easier for the budget and process. But as councilors, it would be up to us to de develop a plan to fund it moving forward. But I, I fully support it um, and wish you the best of luck in that application process. Go ahead, Chief. I, I, I'm just going to be a little greedy and say, if this is something that like the town manager has said that we could probably look at some other growth revenues from elsewhere, um, you know, should we go for the four or should we up the number? I'm just going to throw it out there. I, well, I'll be honest. I, I, at this time, I could only support four because I know future economic growth. I, I would fully support four. Um, okay. I, I get the number and uh, there's no doubt. I think I brought it up a couple years ago or two years ago. I think the town of Shrewsbury, was going for eight and had more firefighters than we did and didn't do EMS. So there's no doubt that I think it could sustain it. But uh, I, I just think that uh, while I appreciate the fact that it's eight to go to 750, four years from now, that that's a big number, especially if we want a fire station that's desperately needed. So you got to pick that, that thing. You balance the staffing with the needs of a fire station as well. So I, I have, I'm looking at that big picture as well. There's no doubt that we could probably justify, but uh, um, that, that would be too scary. Um, personally, that's my personal counselor opinion, not as chair, but as a counselor. Councilor Lazo? This is my personal opinion. Um, no, Chief, I, I got to tell you, it's your job to ask. I expect you to ask for eight, okay? But uh, we're the council and we have to do the balancing act because the voters are gonna to have to talk about a brand new fire station or whatever the option is. Um, I think uh, we're, we're shopping for locations. Along with that, we have a police department, a school system, roads. We have, we have a lot of stuff that uh, is, is on the burner, so to speak. This council's handled a lot and, and did a good job so far on the balancing act, but don't ever be afraid to ask. It's your job to, to reach for the stars and it's our job to balance all the, the stuff that we have to do. But I do respect your request and uh, I don't know if I'd favor that, but uh, we'll move forward on what we have in front of us. And I think this is a, a good bite out of the elephant, so to speak. Thank you. Council Da. Thank you, Mr. Chair, to you. Uh, Chief, it's gonna be uh, any specific number hiring from the town, residents, uh, we do. I, don't know if you I understand did, my question. 
I, I do understand that uh, we do have actually uh, a call member on our list right now. So it would probably be somebody from the call uh, that's on our list currently from, from the call department. And they're from town. So, you know, we like to see, you know, more on our citizen to be hired and got a job uh, locally. Thank you. Thank you. Any other councils? Councilor uh, Laza. Quick second. Did you say that the on call men are from town? All except two of them right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other councils? Any other councils? Say none. Roll call. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Catrona. Yes. Councilor Daniel. Yes. Councilor Dow. Yes. Councilor Dovan. Yes. Councilor Lazo. Yes. Councilor Marchetti. Yes. Councilor Ryan. Yes. And Councilor Steves. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Chief Hewlett, what, what is that grant you that you have to submit? Friday. Friday. Friday, right? And it came out late too, right? Is that and that's why it came rushed. So that just for the public right. of why it didn't really go through the PPP normal came it came out late and it's due quick. So thank you for getting that in and so good, good luck and I'm sure you'll be up late trying to get all those numbers in. All right. Yes, thank you for the consideration. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Thank you. All right, Council's Forum, Council McKinney. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, as I said, I wanted to talk about this uh, medical benefits for police and fire because at the last town council meeting, I brought this up and the, the uh, town manager said that I, was, I received false information. So I, I went back, I asked some of these uh, constituents <laughs> what this was all about. Well, did I get something wrong here? This is what I discovered. Uh, when Southbridge police officers and firefighters sustain on the job injuries, the injuries they receive in the line of duty, there is no maximum, there is a maximum amount allowed by the town's insurance carrier for medical bills covering those injuries. And once they reach that limit, they're no longer reimbursed for medical bills associated with those injuries. So police and firefighters end up having to pay out of pocket for things such as you know prescription medicine uh, and some doctors' copays. And I, I the town manager stated that um, stated that uh, employees can get disability retirement pay and are immediately qualified for town disability insurance, which is a 50-50 split. But what does the disability insurance cover, uh, what does it not cover? Does it not cover prescription benefits? These are some of the questions that I would like him to bring to uh, the meeting that you're going to have on this. Now, I just wanna say that I was injured on the job once many years ago and I received workers comp and I settled and I received full coverage for any medical bills associated with my injury for the rest of my life. Uh, one injured employee in town told me that he's not talking about He's not looking for 100% healthcare coverage. He just would be satisfied if the town could at least help him with some prescription medicine costs pertaining to his injury. Uh, I did receive the memo as we all did from the town manager last week concerning this issue. Uh, I, I just thought the, the memo was a little vague for on this issue. Um, the cost, it says the costs are unknown, but I think that the insurance carrier would know down to the dollar how much they are charging municipalities who have this coverage. And uh, of the handful of municipalities who have accepted indemnification, the police or fire half wish they never had done so. Uh, I imagine that's probably true. Some, you know, not everybody wants to provide benefits, but of the municipalities who have the coverage, how much are they paying and which towns and what dollar amounts? So these are some of the questions that I've, I've, I'm, I'm asking that he brought, he brought forward. I did ask Councilor Lazo to put this on the person and property, protection of person and property subcommittee meetings. I did not realize that it was going on general government. I didn't know about that until tonight. No one told me that that's where it was going. So, but I do hope that these, some of these issues 
can be included on the agenda. And I would like the town manager to provide us with details that are missing in his memo, such as how much would it cost to provide some coverage? What towns have coverage for medical in expenses for retired police and firemen from on the job injuries? Of the municipalities who have the coverage, how much are they paying? And if the town manager does provide the list of towns and costs for coverage, I'd like them to include how many people are covered in those towns. Now look, I'm not trying to give away the store here, but I do think some limited medical coverage for just the costs related to on the job injury for police and fire should be explored. And that's all I'm asking for. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else? No, I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Council Katrina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, just a few things. Um, I was going to follow up on some of these tomorrow. Just, um, uh, I was um, in the Central Street parking lot today. I noticed that the fence that up there, the new fencing down by over by where the dumpsters are, um, is broken. I don't know if someone's hit it. That's what it looks like. But um, if we can take a look at that already, it, it's damaged. Um, the other thing I wanted to, a few other things I wanted to bring up. Went hiking yesterday, parked at West Street School, walked the sidewalks in front of West Street School. They are dangerous. And I don't know if that's on a plan or if there's something that, um, that, that, that I'm not aware of that we plan on repairing those, um, but they are a certain hazard. Some of the, the steps, the cracks in the sidewalks are probably four or five inches. And I, I, I think it's something we should address before summertime. The kids are, kids are, going to be back in school um and it's it's um it's not a good reflection on on the town um just we heard a lot tonight about destination southbridge we heard a lot tonight about the future of southbridge well and and i don't know if we can hopefully we can talk about this in in p and d um you know, it would be nice to create the some time for walkability for Southbridge, you know, downtown, um, um, you know, bring attractives, uh, bring attractions to town, attract people to downtown, attract people to live in downtown Southbridge, um, create incentives for landlords and shops to renovate. You know, I think that's some of those ideas that will help um, make Southbridge a, a future destination, um, you know, create incentive plans to bring new businesses into town, um, retail restaurants, instead of all, you know, not just service businesses, um, just throwing some ideas out there. I, I have visited two new businesses in town recently and they both shared with me that the, the, and I know a lot of the regulations, rules and regs are, are governed by the state, but the first, some frustration with dealing with how difficult it is to open a small business in Southbridge. And this is, it's really troubling when, when, when I hear from two businesses within a week and um, it, it's concerning that to not just to open a small business in town, but to um, want to come to Southbridge, th they have to be welcomed into town. And th they didn't get, neither business got that feeling as well as another business that was turned off by coming to town. So some concerns that uh, were there. And I think this is a, Wonderful town, a great community. And if we're going to attract new business, well, we have to get creative, I think, in some of our, our ideas. <clears throat> we can go to Putnam, just over the line, for example. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful town. And they've done a lot to revive that little, little downtown area. Um, that could be Southbridge. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councilor Ryan. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, briefly, I just want to say um, a brief uh, thanks to all the counselors and members of the public who um, outreached to me. Um, my grandmother, Beverly Ryan, has passed. Um, she lived in Southbridge for a number of years, actually. Um, my father went to Southbridge High. Um, and then after he left, uh, she moved down to Florida and then was there for most of her life. Um, her grandchildren were everything and she will be dearly, uh, dearly missed. And that's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Al. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To you, uh, Councilor Ryan, sorry for your loss. Uh, 221, I believe, Average Street, one of the neighbor concerned, he's on uh, oxygen and uh, one of the trees is very uh, uh, dangerous, uh, uh, not safe, <clears throat> falling apart everywhere. If you go by, you see it <clears throat> every day. <clears throat> Some branches on the sidewalk or on the street. Uh, I'm not sure if the town or the, the owner of the property he's responsible but it's very very dangerous for the public or somebody walking or you know the power line uh, maybe somebody can look at it uh, the snow is melting and our street is showing i like to see more cleaning on the street in the future not once a year it's uh that's where you're gonna start if you want a beautiful south of bridge the least we need to clean our street to when you drive in town, see all the road nice and clean. And that's where you start, I believe. So you can see now corners, street, sidewalk, dirties. So I hope that's something uh, DPW that can look more, you know, uh, you know, it, it's very ugly, take it, you know, this way. But last year, I think we only swapped the street once. It should be done either monthly or weekly. I believe the least the main, the main road. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tom Manager. I didn't catch the name of the street. Uh, it was 221 Everett. 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 Okay, thank you. It's very dangerous. You know, if you go look at it, it's it's very dangerous. So that's that council. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Sir Steve. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first off, sorry to hear about your grandmother, Jackie. Um, let me know if you need anything help, any help. Um, and um, other than that, I don't have anything else. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to, um, um, I didn't have plan to talk a lot about tonight, but uh, just to, to kind of answer Councilor Katrona's message, obviously, uh, we're always looking for more and more. Um, and I will say the shared streets that we just got approved for $230,000, which will help the downtown corridor with the marketplace and everything like that, that we as a town council just approved here a few weeks ago. Um, that will help out quite a bit, along with some of the flashy beacons that we, we approved as well. West Street School um, with on that street itself is being redone. I believe it's next year, this year, next year with CDBG funds, chapter 90 funds and all that, that we've already, I believe approved as well. Um, I would recommend, I uh, talked to April about, um, as far as uh, Earth Day, um, cleaning up our streets a little bit more, but I'm in, in, in favor of what uh, Councillor Dow, and I know the town manager and I have spoke consistently about that as well as uh, cleaning up our streets and, and uh, utilizing the $15 an hour people that we hire during the summertime to constantly clean up our streets. And I think, uh, that would be a big plus as well. And we also, um, the consultation that we've received uh, from the state for over $70,000 to bring somebody in and the intern to help out with the redevelopment authority, that's all been part of something that we've been discussing. But by, by all means, I would be willing to have that conversation um, at a uh, PND meeting with, with anybody. Um, as far as uh, um, I know, I know the chair didn't really want to discuss it this evening as far as uh, earlier on, and I, I know Councilor Marchetti had brought this up. Um, I am the one who brought up the uh, the Gen, Gen Grub or, or PPP or, or Council of the Whole meeting since we've gotten received a memo from the town manager, and I'm looking for some answers as well. 
Um, I am for it or I'm not against it or I'm not for it. I want to hear this discussion played out. I will not be pushed around by individuals with a mandate to uh, to uh, to see uh, the way they want to go out or whatever it may be. Um, I will see that I will listen to the entire story when it comes to this indemnification, and then I will make my personal decision. But as I stated to that one individual directly, I will ask the town manager for a request for a memo, and I will bring it to a subcommittee meeting. And that's exactly what I did since for a year now working on this. Um, as far as everything else is concerned, uh, I want to thank the town clerk's office as well. Um, today I went in there today to look at some archives and their phones were ringing off the hook as far as when it came to registration of individuals for the COVID shots. So I also want to thank them and not forget about them um, in that area. And also tomorrow at 1130 in the morning, we have an emergency operations center Facebook live brief um, with Harrington Hospital, uh, myself, Chief Woodson, and uh, I believe Harry and the doctor as well. So thank you. So I guess. Thank you. Council Lawson. Uh, yes, um, I'd just like to say, Jackie, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, I know it must be tough. Anything I can do, just give me a call. Um, I'd like to take a moment and say uh, thanks to the, the community center, the COVID team that we have in Southbridge, because I've been hearing some horror shows about other areas in the state that have not done such a good job, uh, such as giving the first shot and giving a card. And then when the gentleman goes back, uh, they, they're questioning whether that card is right. And it's a lot of chaos where I'm, I'm really looking at the Southbridge model as the role model. Everybody, I've heard nothing but positive. Uh, Roland Larishel, uh, the whole uh, the, the the information that the group puts out, and I, I know I shouldn't mention names because I'll always forget somebody, but as a group, I think Southbridge and the COVID team is unbelievable and heads above some of the other communities that are, that are doing the dispensing of the shots. Uh, one other issue, I just have one, um, I just want to bring out that we lost uh, a good friend, a uh, civic uh, person that was president of Pop Warner for many years a football coach, a member of the Southbridge Police Department for his total career. And that's Brian Masker. He passed on, uh, a very good friend of mine. And uh, the town is going to miss him. I know he put a lot of time in with the youth and with the police department and stuff. So, uh, you know, if Brian's looking down, he's a Southbridge guy that always wanted to uh, do good things. Uh, and that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, Councilor Daniel. Uh, I'd like to yield to the town manager. I believe he had something he wanted to say. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, I, no. Thank you, um, Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Councilor Juven. Um, just uh, since two councilors brought it up, um, the memo that I provided you was um, with some in information I had started looking at earlier. Um, the reason why I don't have a lot of detail is because the insurance company, our insurance carrier, said there isn't a lot of information that I can give you um, unless you want an in-depth um, memo where we go out to you know it's my understanding there's close to 25 towns you're going to have to find out what they spend you're going to have to go to their retirement boards and find out how many people are on there it could be quite a lengthy uh, process to get the information you're looking for what I would prefer to do is go to uh, the subcommittee hear all the questions see what we can uh, formulate as to what you actually need, and then we could uh, look at this a little bit further. And I, I just, I don't think I said it was uh, false information. I think if you go back, uh, I think I said it wasn't accurate because what I've been told, um, even with the description of the workman's comp, there is a cap, but I was told differently how it's handled in the end. So if I can get a list of the questions, I can start working on some of them for the subcommittee discussion. And then if we have to do, if people want research, if I can't get it from the insurance company, if we're looking for uh, numerous towns to weigh in, it'll take additional time. That's all I just wanted to weigh in on that. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Council Daniel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to compliment the council on, uh, on being thoughtful about what it 
takes for us to get done what we need to get done. Um, I think it was expressed tonight by a number of councillors, and I just want to reiterate to the townsfolk that uh, we can shoot from the hip. Uh, well, I, I say we could shoot from the hip and just deal with problems on an individual basis and maybe throw some money at some of them. But instead, I think what you're seeing is a council that's very thoughtful, that uh, has uh, sometimes contentious discussion, but good discussion in terms of what the overriding issues are and looking at it from all sides. And I think that thoughtful planning gets it right. So for instance, uh, the road planning uh, started off with uh, a counselor bringing it to our attention and eventually we end up with a very thoughtful and concise uh, road management plan that uh, will carry us into the future and will uh, be a, um, a thoughtful expense of taxpayers' dollars. Um, in terms of the town hall tonight and the air conditioning, again, um, no one denies that air conditioning uh, needs to be done in the building, but there's a lot of needs in the building and to address the entire building as a whole, looking to the future with other issues in town, um, I think is the way to go. So we look at individual issues in a thoughtful way. We look at uh, total capital planning in a thoughtful way. And I really feel good about the way the council this year has been, uh, has been going about doing that. And I just want to compliment the council, my fellow councilors, on, on the work that they're doing. Um, at the same time, also, on, on a different note, I'd like to offer my condolences to Councilor Ryan. Um, uh, I know how that feels. I've been there. And uh, you have my deepest sympathies. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, next meeting is scheduled for Monday, March 29th, 2021. And perhaps we'll be in council chambers for that one. If I send a motion to adjourn. So move. Okay. Motion is second. Roll call. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Catrona. Yes. Councilor Daniel. Yes. Councilor Dow. Yes. Councilor Jovan. Yes. Councilor Lazo. Yes. Councilor Marchetti. Yes. Councillor Ryan? Yes. And Councillor Steves? Yes. Good night, all.